everybody. Welcome to Club Pro Chatter Season 5, Episode Number 3. Greg Snow coming to you live, kind of like Club Pro, or uh, who is that guy? The Club Pro guy. Coming to you live from the Olivia Golf Club. Got my co-host Scott McDonald coming to you live from where? Alexandria, Minnesota, and in much better, better health this time, Greg. That's right. That's right. Last month, Scotty was ill. Uh, were you diagnosed with like bronchitis or anything? No, I think it was just uh, having kids and having a stomach bug come through the house. Uh, okay. Easter weekend was pretty boring. We just stayed in on lockdown and uh, didn't get out until the Monday after. So much better. We're playing golf. We got to be smiling. Yeah, glad. But hey, let's introduce our guest here first, Scotty, before we get into too much stuff. We are so happy to have on Jeff Sorensen coming to us live from where, Jeff? Uh, from Blaine, Minnesota, right next to the TPC. Blaine, Minnesota. Sorny, it is good to see you. Good to see you back from Florida. I know you lived down there for some time. When did you get back into town? I actually got back uh, March 30th, um, and then I took a group of members to uh, Ireland first week of April, April 1st to the 8th. And we played uh, Belfast and Dublin. We played uh, six phenomenal courses, including Port Rush and County Down. It was a heck of a trip. It was, it was the weather was you know, not great, but it was better than it was here. <laughs> we could play well, not hard, right, yeah. Scotty? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, had you been over there before, Jeff? Did you play uh, in a PGA Cup over there? Yeah, that was in uh, Northern England um, uh, in 2013, uh, and that was. It was a Parkland style course. It was inland, about you know an hour inland. Uh, kind of reminded me of a course maybe in uh, Western Wisconsin. So as far as links go, I, I was in Scotland in 2014 with some uh, group of friends, and then I uh, went to Southwest Ireland in 2017. So this was my first time up to the north side of Ireland, which was pretty amazing. Yeah, I can only imagine. Greg, I'm assuming you and I on our tight budgets, we have not been over there yet. It's on the list, but yeah, I, I have not made it to Scotland, Ireland. Uh, shoot, I would even take it England. I, I don't care anywhere on that big, on the Great Britain Island, <laughs> I would do it. Sorny, was that your first one? Trip over there? Yeah. No, no, I went I went to Scotland in 14, and I went to Southwest Ireland in 17. So it was oh, my I first. missed that. I'm sorry. Oh, no I was daydreaming. I think you said Jeff. that. Yeah. Jeff, we have this apology segment, which I'm going to segue into because hold on, right, like, right, hold no. on, stop. We have to start with the popular demand. All right. It came back the song. All right. And then we'll get into apologies. Sorny, we got rid of the song for a while, but we're back. Scott, I think you're going to appreciate this one. Listen up. Here we go. Do I need to turn my volume up? Maybe let me try that. No, that's the wrong way. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Scotty, I just go into the chorus, so sing it loud, buddy. Here we go. Oh, no. Never let go through the wave and through the storm. Never let go every high and every low. Oh, oh no. no. You never you let, let go. go. Lord, you never let go of me. Why are you playing that song? Well, I thought you would like that. Well, I do like that song. My kids actually sang that song in church with Julie on Mother's Day. Yes. Did you know this? No. Okay. Wow, that just happened this past Sunday. Yes. I uh, thought you were creeping on us on Facebook. No, I didn't. I had no idea. I was singing power this morning. You know, I found out that why people sing power. The acoustics are amazing. I mean, stuff bounces off the wall, and you can change your pitches and all those things. Sony, are you a shower singer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I, uh, I'm in and out. <laughs> <laughs> you're a burger. You're a California burger. In and out, baby. Okay, Scotty. Go ahead. So, apologies. Yeah, fired up. Jeff, last episode we had. Greg calling Brad Cole, Scott Cole, and this is about the third or fourth time that it's happened. So the fact that he didn't remember you saying 
that you had just been on multiple trips. And then he <laughs> follows up and asks that there's a chance that Greg will we'll be looking for a new co-host in a year or two because Greg is officially losing it. So I'm going to apologize for Greg for his forgetfulness. And I'm also going to apologize for last episode that I was just, I was a mess. I was on the verge of, uh, of passing out, but we powered through. So hopefully it didn't show through. We are the champions was okay, Greg, but, uh, that's my apologies this week. I'm I am so sorry, Sorny. I was totally looking at the agenda, thinking about my next question. I tuned Scotty out every now and then, and then you were talking, and I was thinking about it, and then I was like, "Hey, I wonder if Sorny's ever been there." Lo and behold, <laughs> there you well, are. Maybe, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a sponsorship uh, opportunity. Maybe Miracle Air can uh, be a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> what do we? What's the one for memory loss that I could do? <laughs> <laughs> i don't even Scotty? know you should you should start doing sudoku puzzles i heard that helps with your memory let's get the elephant out of the room right now all right i can feel the tension brewing i want to get it out we're all grown adults all right we can talk about this monday we had our inaugural or the first day of the match play event uh you get paired up in foursomes and then you play the guy that beat the other guy that was in your group for the afternoon round and you two jabronis both made it through uh into the third round we'll call it and are paired up against each other yeah we set this podcast up way before we even knew matchups and i guys i apologize for that i would have never done this to either of you but we're grown <laughs> adults we're gonna get the elephant out of the room you guys are good friends you're going to high five each other when somebody makes that chip in from 40 yards off the green, even though under your breath, you're going to say, because I know I've done that. So let's talk about what's called the match coming up here. Between <laughs> you and let's not blow it out of proportion here. It's a big um, deal. We get two of our best players in the section right here. We, we've played, uh, we played a couple of times. I think Jeff's got me both times. Um, I remember, one the, I, I remember the one at YZ. I remember that. Yeah, YZ. And then there might have been one other time. Uh, um, I, maybe not. Maybe that's the only time. YZ was a final four. It was a pretty good back and forth match. That was kind of before I was an anybody, Greg. Jeff probably thought, who is this guy? He's probably going to be working at Ace Higher Hardware in two years. Uh, <laughs> he's not long for the golf business, but. Uh, my I game's remember, gotten a lot better I since then. I remember it went to yes. Eight. Yeah, Greg or uh, Jeff won on 18. And then you got in the final. Did you win in the finals that year? It was yeah, either. I beat, uh, I beat Benny Myers in the finals. Okay. Okay. So, how many? So, before we jump into this whole matchup, Greg, Jeff's got this list of accolades that we could probably talk about for the next hour, right? <laughs> Six time player of the year. He, I think he talked seven. to at seven. <laughs> well, I lost. Well, they don't even have it updated on the section website yet. Past winners 2021 is not even on there. And I'm like, okay. So um, he's talked to Adam Chandler already about a full time membership because he's <laughs> playing in the 3M Open this year out his backyard, which I know he's super excited about. And how many major championships you can include the match play? Uh, nine. 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 Six stroke play and three match plays. Okay. Okay. And still looking for state open tape mark golf champions. What are your closest finishes so in I, those? I won, uh, I've won the golf champions and the tape mark. I have Okay. Won. Okay. The only okay. One I come in. Yes. What, how close have you come in the state open? Uh, I finished uh, two years ago. I was low pro. Uh, I finished third. Okay. 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 I think I finished uh, fourth or fifth one other time. I've had some other top tens too, but it's been kind of the elusive one. Don't you think for us, obviously the national club pro as well is, is a very difficult event, but locally the state open is the toughest field that we face each year. Oh, for sure, because you've got all the 
top amateurs and you've got, uh, you know, some of the non PGA pros that are, you know, kind of playing pros and there's some good, good players, but, you know, I think that I, you know, it's been a while since a, a PGA pros won. I think the last guy was maybe Mike Barge in 07, possibly. I think so. Was and it? I think that's, yeah, I think that's the last PGA pro to win it. So that's something we've got to change. Yeah. I've, I've said this on, on this podcast, we do predictions each year and I'm like, okay, this is the year a PGA pro wins either the state open, the tape mark or the golf champions. Cause it's been a while in all three of those. Yeah, I can't remember. What was the last tape mark? Maybe Brishke? Brishke or Donnie, yeah. Well, we had, uh, we had, we had our uh, <clears throat> Wisconsin guy who's a PGA Pro won it a couple of times with the tape mark. But I, I, I won it in 09, and it's been kind of a blur since then. Yeah. Greg, questions? Jump on in. Well, I want to get back to this match play. I, <laughs> I just I hate to keep digging it in. But I just think you guys are two of our top players. Scotty said to me off the air, Sorny, he goes, I didn't have a banner year last year. I finished 15th, so the my seeding was my seeding. And so I, because I kind of was needling him that I go, ooh, tough draw. You had the, the Schmied who just won Indian Hills, and then and then Vernon, and now he gets Sorensen. And I would imagine, Sorny, you probably are saying to yourself, that's a pretty tough draw because – Scotty's a top-notch player too. I mean, he's usually in the oh, yeah. top eight. Oh yeah. Well, I was I was actually talking to my brother last night, and you know he loops for me in big tournaments and stuff. And uh, he's like, "Well, where are you guys going to play?" And I said, "Well, I was thinking maybe I'd throw out to Scotty and say, hey, Scotty, why don't you send me a list of five courses that you're interested in playing, and I'll take a look, and maybe we can agree on one. You know, just uh, get the ball rolling here. We got till July 31st, but." You know, I'd say uh, with my schedule and stuff like that, maybe we should try to get a date set pretty soon. Not yes. not with the play it soon, but let's get a date set pretty soon. So it could be in June or July, whatever. That sounds yeah. really fair, Sorny. Scotty, any early thoughts on a golf course? We got five. Yeah. I mean, top I, I five. Just, no, I just I'd follow up to Jeff with Jeff. What are your least favorite five <laughs> golf courses that you don't like to play? The Pines. <laughs> the preserve <laughs> i like the preserve. i like the preserve okay. but we definitely will not play the match at the pine there's no <laughs> agree to that <laughs> that was off the air scotty before you got on i was talking about how uh how the conditions may not be ideal up there right now at the pines and and sorty's like oh great and because again that golf course you get a little claustrophobia up there you know i i heard this about the wilderness the first time that the section championship was up there that people were just i mean i got i went up the second time and you know i shot 90 and you just feel like you gotta guide that one down there because if you don't you're repegging it's not a drop you're repegging yeah. it well you own your career almost ended and that's when that Jeff won that year at Wilderness the last time we were there. So we can Is talk to him about you? that. Beat You're Don in ending? a playoff. 2010, uh, won in a playoff over Don Berry. Yes. I uh, remember, was that your first section championship win? Uh, that, was, that was my third. Third, jeez. And then it took 11 years to win another one. Yeah. And last year, so he's defending champion in two ways greg he's defending from last year yep. and defending from the last time it was at wilderness that's that's pretty crazy to think about that i better i better play good yeah <laughs> no pressure no pressure <laughs> sort of you seem to always play good so uh i know that's from a guy who doesn't always play good um <laughs> but again a, a lot of people view you that way let's let's move on to the um club professional championship down at barton creek um, we were watching you, Sorny. We, Scotty and I, we have our phones on pretty much all the time watching this stuff. I watched a bunch of it on whenever I could on the TV, and um, looked like uh, it looked to me at first like, oh, people are going to go low here, but the scoring never really panned out to be that. I felt like talk to us about your experience down there and what you what you faced and course conditions and scoring conditions, all those things. Give us a little. Uh, uh, rundown of what happened. Well, uh, first of all, I got to give a big shout out to you, Greg, for the nice text you were sending me. That was great. Got a couple encouraging texts from my buddy, the Snowman. So that was cool. Uh, yeah, I interject. Let me interject. Yeah. 
thank you for saying that because a lot of times you don't know if you should send them or shouldn't because That's you're kind of like, well, he's kind of in his world. Should I, should I not? And I just thought I'm going to do it. Sorny and I are buddies. I'm, I'm sending them. Oh, that's, that's great. I, I appreciate it. It was, uh, it's always good to hear from people, you know, maybe not phone calls during it, but texts are work pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a nice venue. Uh, like the courses were very, uh, interesting courses, like, um, you know, a lot of topography, it kind of what Austin, I've never been to Austin, Texas, and basically Austin, Texas, the way I describe it is it's California landscape with Florida weather, right? So it's, you know, it's warm, you know, a little bit humid in April, not crazy, but a little bit humid and it's, but it's, it's hilly. It's not quite mountainous, but it's close to mountains and it's uh, close to, you know, that severe in spots and uh, kind of rocky, you know, it's kind of an arid climate, right? It's not, mm -hmm. there's not of mud it's a lot of like kind of uh dirt and rocks and stuff like that but <clears throat> in the course um the courses were pretty different um they were uh the core crenshaw course which is the secondary course called the cliffs really really fun golf course uh big sweeping greens that you have to play the slope the lay of the land i mean if if there's a canyon to the left everything's going left kind of thing so it was a, it was a really um really fun course to play they converted it to a par 70 instead of a par 71 which was which was fair because the the one par five was a pretty short par five and it was there's was ample room to drive it um really uh that course was in great shape um the greens are good. The, uh, the fairways, they had a, a updated Bermuda on those and it played, the fairways played nice. Um, but you really had to know the greens. I mean, there was some pretty severe putts, you know, you could have a 20 footer that you're playing 12 feet of break, you know, pretty easily. Um, but you know, a little bit shorter in spots, so you could kind of take advantage of that. Um, but yeah, nice course. Then the, the Fazio foothills, I mean, really, championship course you know like got it has some length um so up you know quite a few up and downs a very difficult course to walk the first day of the practice round we didn't really know the lay of the land and we had to park in this parking lot didn't realize the range was 0.7 miles away so we watched walk 0.7 miles there then 0.7 miles back to the 10th tee because if they were starting and at the end of the day my brother's phone said 25,000 steps it was 12 and a half miles for, uh, for one round of golf i think we walked my brother we walked 82 miles that week and we walked like you know something like three thousand flights of steps or something like that but um but it was good uh it's good workout but um yeah the course um you know it's a fazio so a lot of like you know a lot of really good holes uh pretty ample fairway size and then a decent amount of rough uh, as far as area goes and then you're just off it's just gone right that's there's no there's no side by side holes there's a couple that are kind of near each other but it's not like you can bail out and go to the other side um really good greens were phenomenal um really good uh they had a little trouble with their fairways um and i guess there's rumors that they're going to move the match play there and they're going to redo the fairways this summer so they didn't overseed them which they because it's an older bermuda they probably should have um so that was kind of made the scoring tough because you could hit it down the middle of the fairway and you have kind of an iffy lie you know kind of a like one time i think i commented to my brother i said i think i'd rather be on a dirt car path than this right now <laughs> you know and <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't want to disparage the place because it is a phenomenal facility, but um, it was tough. That was kind of the ball striking was a little tough and you had to be pretty precise on your approach shots. So I can see why, you know, yeah, actually, I, I kind of thought the first, you know, the first day, because it wasn't real windy. I thought the kind of the same thing. Like I saw some, I played uh, in the uh, afternoon and I saw, you know, a few good scores and I was like, okay, let's go get it here, you know, and I uh, had it a couple under early, um, but yeah, it kind of came up and bit back. Definitely uh, the wind really picked up the second day in the kind of mid morning. And then I played in the morning that day. And then, um, and then the third day it blew pretty good and the course really firmed up. So we're back on the foothills after the uh, initial cut and, and the, greens i would say probably sped up at least two to three feet so there's quite a bit difference in speed um and then the last day it was blowing 
harder and gusty and kind of hard to tell where it was coming from. And, you know, they, we saw some, some tough scores, uh, out there. And, um, so, you know, it was, but it was a, it was a good venue overall. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they do move the match play there to see how the, the tour players like it with new fairways, of course. Right. Yeah, no, uh, <clears throat> so Jeff, obviously always the goal for you each year, I assume is to make it to this event. And then the ultimate goal is to make it to the PGA. So, but I talk to people who have never played in this event, don't follow it this closely. How tough is it to make that cut? Because you've got 312 guys that get whittled down to the top 90 in ties. How tough is it to make that cut? Well, I mean, I, I, I kind of, I've heard someone say it before and I kind of use it as it's like the toughest cut in golf. I mean, you got, you know, the, the other one that probably be tougher would maybe be the U S amateur. Cause you're going from three twelve to 64, right. Mm -hmm. but we're three twelve to, to 90. And for a while it was just three twelve to 70. And then they finally kind of said, wow, that's kind of ridiculous. Let's go to 90 after two days. And then after three days, we'll whittle it down to 70. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, if you're playing well, you know, and you kind of get it going a little bit, then you kind of relax because you know that you're going to be inside the cut line, no problem, but it's not the cut. Like it's, it's not like some tournaments, you know, like, I don't know, I shouldn't, but like the state open, I feel like for me, like if I'm playing just like social, I, I still got a pretty good chance of making the cut. Right. Like last year, I didn't play very well the first two days, but I still made the cut and I kind of felt like, you know, like I was still in there, but if you have a so-so game that week, there's no way you're making the cut, right? You got to be playing pretty well just to kind of be in there because it's such a tight cut, you know, it's so that, you know, so, you know, then you also feel like at the same time, you're like, hey, I'm not that far out of like contention. So you're trying to push to get back in contention, but then the other hand, you're like, all right, well, I can't afford to, you know, make a double or something. So I got to be a little bit conservative because I got to, I got to make sure I make that cut because, <clears throat> you know it's a big it's a big week and and the thing about that tournament is a lot of years and some years maybe it was a little too harsh like there's been times where the cut came and if you played even golf even par golf the last two days you're, you you move up to the top 20 so you know if you can make that cut you still got a really good chance to make that top 20 so you you know you got to kind of strategize you know what am i what's my goal here today to you know the if you're not like in the lead or really close to the lead, like what's my strategy here as far as how aggressive I'm gonna aggressive I'm gonna be. That's uh that's awesome, Sony, because that leads me into what I wanted to ask you was you shot 72, 68, 74, 75. You were right there because even made it to the to the PGA championship and you finished plus six, tied for 45th. You said it was some windy condition, 74, 75. Were you happy with those rounds or did you sit on the plane going, Oh, I three putted number eight and I, I flubbed a chip on number 12. You know, how do you, how do you go back and assess that when you're looking back on it? Well, I think one thing that maybe I've gotten better at over the years is that I used to kind of beat myself up a little bit at times. And now it's just like, you know, if I put a hundred percent effort into every shot, you know, it is what it is. Right. I mean, it's like, what else am I going to do? Right. You try as hard as you can. You try to figure out the conditions um, but yeah, the, the, you know, the first day I had it going was two under through, um, through six started on the back and actually hit a perfect drive on 16, perfect, a really nice, um, second shot into 16 there on the foothills. And then I three putted and I proceeded to play it two more times and I three putted it every day, the screen. So I ended up and one time I missed the fairway. I had to chip out. So I actually made a five, five and a six. I was four over on that hole. Right. And didn't really hit more than maybe one bad shot in the hole. I just, the green just looked more severe than it was. And I kept leaving the first putt short and they always, they put it right by the water. So you had to play kind of smart. So that hole. And then the other hole was 18, uh, which is this, you know, reachable par five that plays 25 yards uphill with a big Creek. And um, it's just, you know, and, you're, and, and unfortunately you're hitting to a fairway that kicks to the right and there's trees to the right and there's water to the left and you know if you hit a good drive you're going to have a good opportunity but you also know that you're going to be hitting off kind of a sketchy lie so it's kind of like mm -hmm. looking back at it the last day i actually 
put my three iron back in the bag. I had a set of this hybrid that I was carrying and um, I just teed off with a three iron play as a three shot hole. So it, it kind of, in the end, it was those two holes, but the third day, you know, you know, I obviously I had a two under and then I, I made three bogeys and just kind of the back nine, I was kind of scraping it. I guess it was the front nine, but the <clears throat> scraping around the first day, uh, you know, just playing kind of smart golf. Cause I didn't feel like I was quite clicking, but I got it in a one over and, you know, it was a tough golf course. So I was like, okay, fine. You know, 72, it's fine. And then the second day, you know, on the, on the secondary course, I, I kind of like, I made a bogey on the third hole and I, like I was 30 yards from the green. I it hit, I hit it further down there than I thought I would because the way the course was and I had kind of this goofy kind of chip. And then I just barely missed the tee shot and I'm behind a tree and I make double and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm four over par and I parred seven with 11 to go. And I'm like, the cuts, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking the cut's going to be even because the way it was looking. And so I, you know, I just said, all right, it's time to go here. And then I made, I went five under my last 11 with a bogey um, on a par five. So played really good coming in. And then the third day um, played uh, actually a really kind of had a, a tough start, but then I actually made a birdie and then I actually hold one out on the fourth hole uh, that day um, from 127 yards. So that was like a little kickstart, got on under par, of course was playing tough. And I was one under through 15. And again, I get to 16, hit a perfect drive. And then I hit it on the green and then I three jack. And then 17, I just, and I, at that point, I knew I was moving up the board because the way it was playing. I, I started that day at 35th, and I, I, I pretty much figured at that point, I mean, I wasn't like super, you know, th thinking about it quite that specifically, but I was like, I'm probably in the top 20 right now after grinding out some pars, you know, you know, through 15. And, you know, and then 17 hit a pretty good tee shot. It hits the green, takes a bad bounce into a bunker, don't have a good lie, you know, hit a decent bugger shot, miss it. And then 18, hit driver trying to make eagle or birdie and it just kicks a little right and i'm behind a tree again and it's like and i made double and it was like wow you know i'll go from shooting a really solid one under round if they just clean some stuff up to shooting you know what did i shoot for uh 70 74 yeah so uh, you know then i was like all right went back to 45th so then i i knew the last day i probably had i was two over par going in the last day i knew i had to shoot probably you know i thought if i shot under par i'd have a chance at the top 20 because i knew it was gonna blow and i actually played a really solid round that round too just um just a cut is just this kind of course where you know I, the comment i made to someone they said well how'd you play i said well, i played out of 72 holes i'd say i played 62 to 64 really solid holes and I had probably four holes where I hit shots that I thought were good and kind of got a bad bounce and, you know, easy bogey. And then I had a you know, couple, couple bad shots that, you know, definitely uh, I deserved to make bogey or double. And I did. So, but it was, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's like, you know, in the end, I missed by six shots, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not that many shots. So, yeah, I mean, I really wanted to get back to the PGA, but, you know, it, it was, you know, I actually thought about it. I had some success in this tournament. Um, but I haven't actually made it to the final day since 2017. I had made two other cuts uh, that I didn't get. And I made it through the second day, but I didn't make it through the third day. And then I had another one where I missed the 36 hole cut and another one that got canceled. So, so it was good to kind of get back and get into the last day and have a, have a shot. So, so it was, it was a good, good week overall. Learned a few things, uh, swing change that I'm kind of making right now, uh, was really good at times and just a little off, but I feel like uh, making some progress. How many of these guys that in the top 20, cause you go down to Florida and you play pretty much all those events. How many of these guys do you know? And, and, and I tell, I talked to Greg about this and us that aren't there uh, during the week, a lot of the names seem the same that are in the top 20, really good players, you know, Vermeers, Beaches, these guys, how many of these Omar. guys? Yeah, Omar, Omar, who did not make it. Um, but uh, yeah, how many of these guys do you know and compete against in the winters? And you know, the upper echelon of that top twenty. How many would you say are? Hey, these are top twenty players in the whole U.S. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely some guys like, you know, maybe not this year, but like a guy like Bob Sowards and yeah, Vermeer and Beach and, you know, um, Michael so, Block. Yeah. Yeah, Michael Block. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about it the other day and it's showing maybe my age and <laughs> your guys' age. I'm actually recognizing less and less guys at the pro because a lot of the guys are done playing, you know, like the guy like. Rick Schuler, I used to see him every year. He's from Virginia, good buddy of mine. He's probably 58 or nine now, and <laughs> he hasn't played in it in a few years. And it's kind of like, ah, oh, that's kind of a bummer. You know, we used to we room together before. So there's some guys that are kind of, you know, going away. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the 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 guys that tend to play well in that tournament, you know, like maybe he didn't this year, but like my friend Rod Perry, you know, they play well down there too. So it's, you know, there's, I don't know. I mean, I, I would say that the, uh, you know, you obviously get some guys in there that haven't done well, but it seems like the same kind of guys are kind of in the mix a lot. And that's, you know, I think it's a thing where, you know, these guys are, some of them, you know, are former tour players or had, you know, took a sniff, you know, on the tour or whatever. And, you know, they just, I don't know, it's kind of like the cream rises to the top sometimes, you know, and so it's, it, but it's, it's, it's a mindset too. You know, some guys are just happy to be there and some guys are not happy unless they win, you know, so it's, Half and half. I mean, the field, I'd say, or, you know, half of the guys are kind of like, hey, you know, it was awesome. I played great in my section championship and I got through and kind of happy to be there. And they just, you know, don't have much expectations. And the other half is like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to win this thing, you know, so maybe it's a little bit of mentality thing, too. That's, that's very good point. I was always impressed, Sorny, with uh, I think it was 2000. Oh, man, must have been eight or nine when we spent that month in Florida together. And every time I got paired with somebody, you were like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Oh, it's also a good player. Hits it here. I'm like, how does Sorny know these guys? I mean, seriously, this is ridiculous. But it's kind of a fraternity that you've kind of fallen into, isn't it? Yeah, there's there's kind of the guys, you know, the regular guys that, you know, I mean, a lot of the Northeast guys, you know, their their job situations are kind of more old school, you know, where the, the members say, you know, get out of here, go South. Here's some money, go play in some tournaments. And that's just kind of the way it is. And a lot of, a lot of the guys have houses down there on the Southeast part of it. I'm in Orlando, but I, it's only a couple hour drive down there. And um, so a lot of those, it's a lot of Northeast guys that come down and I got to meet a lot of them over the years. And then you play with one guy and he's like, Oh, it's my buddy. You know, he works at this club and so you get to know him that way. And uh, so it's, yeah, it's a lot of familiar faces. And yeah, like I said, though, even down at, you know, the winter series and the winter championships, there's, there's, you know, some younger guys now that they're not really that young, but they seem young to me now, you know, like they're 28 or 30 or something like that. And it's like, Oh, this new guy. And then you get to know him. And cause you, there's, there's quite a few events. So you end up, you know, you end up getting paired with a lot of different guys and, um, you know, and then at that time of year, you know, it's not like you're rushing off to go teach a lesson. So a lot of times after you guys are hitting balls or, you know, putting and chipping and, you know, maybe just chit chat with them. And so you get to know a lot of the guys and um, yeah, it's uh it, it is a, it is a pretty, pretty cool little fraternity that we have down there. Um, you know, kind of guys are, uh, you know, excited to be down there for the winter because it's off season. And so there's kind of a good uh, atmosphere too. So one thing you're, you're working on a swing change. One thing I want to ask you, you've got a Callaway hat on. There's a big equipment change this year for you. Um, what went into that? Because you've been with Taylor made 10 plus years. Yeah, I was with TaylorMade for 11 years. and Yeah. It, so so it was, talk to that a little bit because you're adjusting to new equipment coming into this probably the biggest event of the year. Yeah, so I I, I, I don't know. It, there's, there's, there's some different reasons why. And um, I, I always was kind of impressed with my brother um, was in the section for a couple of years as far as a assistant pro, and he, he played uh, Callaway stuff and um not that he played a lot of events um and when i was helping him uh get fit for what he needed i hit some of the he's a lefty and i hit some of the righty equivalent stuff and i was always kind of impressed with their driver i was like wow that's nice you know and <clears throat> um so that I, you know i was always like oh okay you know that's they could make some good stuff and 
a lot of times in the fittings that I do, you know, some, a lot of times Callaway would win, you know, and let's say on the driver, I was always impressed with how it seemed to perform well. So I always kind of had that interest. And then Callaway came up with a little bit of a new staff program. And um, uh, I've always had a good relationship with the local rep and he kind of called me up and we talked about it. And after a, a while of thinking about it and it just kind of made sense for some other reasons. And, so, yeah, so then I started trying the equipment out. I played my TaylorMade stuff through January 1st. That was my contract. And then uh, started testing some of the stuff out in December. And then put, so the, the irons were really easy to switch over to. The, um, the wedges just took a couple of weeks to get used to, and they're very good. And Fairy Woods um, are, I've got, I still have one old fairy wood that I'm still working on one of the fairy woods. And then the driver went through some different testing and stuff and finally kind of got it settled in um, completely about a week before the the club pro, which probably would have been better if I had it a little longer, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's good now. So uh, the driver wasn't really the issue that week. Um, I drove it pretty well. So yeah, it's uh, and then trying the new, you know, the new ball um, sounds really minuscule but the triple track like i always thought, looked at that with the three lines like oh you know no big deal you know i put a line on my ball always and i, I the triple track i don't know it, it seems to help me and i like their new uh chrome soft xls ball which is a lower spin it's helped my i picked up some yardage because i'm getting a little more run out on my driver but my wedge spin still stays up so i'm pretty excited about that it's a really cool change that i didn't really expect and um yeah, so they've been really supportive and, you know, the transition and they've given me a little leeway as far as, you know, when I put stuff in the bag, but it's, I'm 13 out of 14 clubs right now. Uh, after Q1 for Callaway, it looks like you may have made a good decision, Sorny. Uh, they, I, my mind just spun as to the amount of sales that they've done, the boom that they're in somehow, some way again, because I thought they kind of lost their way for a little bit. Um. Are you going to miss the Pebble Beach event a little bit? <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a pretty sweet event. Um, got to, you know, uh, qualified for that TaylorMade National Championship a few times, um, probably three or four or something like that. And it was fun to get out there. Uh, I did, I was lucky enough this winter to do a separate pro-am out there. So I still got my Pebble Beach uh, fill. So I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get out there uh, periodically because it's a pretty special place but uh callaway is going to do a, their own national championship now another reason why i switch is going to be at tory pines and that's going to be in december um so that's going to be a uh, pretty cool callaway cup it's called sorry scotty and i know tory we yeah. just played there if you need advice i <laughs> eagled number nine i'll tell I'll, I'll help you out with that oh wow isn't that like Scott, 600, isn't that like 600 yards don't worry about where we played the team i'm just telling you <laughs> I'm just telling you that we we they wouldn't let us play way back, Sorny. Again, we probably could have, but we had our game. I think we played at what, Scott? Seven? Yeah, it was right around seven. They had uh, they had the back boxes all blocked off because it was the year of the U.S. Open, so they were making sure a bunch of knuckleheads weren't going back there. And I'm sure people that 18 handicaps, I'm getting the full Tory yeah. Times experience. I'm going all the way back, and they're playing in six hours, but. Yeah, Greg, I think Greg's trying to work his way on your bag for that well, if you uh, need Callaway somebody, National event. Sorny, I know the course. I know the layout. I mean, it was funny how every tee box, Sorny, and I'm not, this is hilarious. We'd go, well, where's the other, where Where do the pros play? Because we're way up. And there's some like whole uh, 15 before the par three. You couldn't even see the tee box, Sorny, how far back from where we were playing. It was like, four boxes back from the one that they had us on. It was just incredible to think that, what can they stretch it now? Eight, 8,000? 70 years. <laughs> but the thing, the thing that it's just like Hazeltine, right? I mean, the, when they have the PGA championship or the Ryder cup, the fairways are, they, they're hard and fast. So, I mean, True. you know, you, you play, uh, you know, probably the same thing at Torrey for the U S open. And when Rom won, uh, it was last year, right. Um, you know, that thing was brick hard and you know, the ball's running 80 yards, right. So it's a totally different golf course. So that's why they got to stretch those tees out. I think. So I think you guys were smart not to get back there. Cause it would have been stupid. Cause I'm sure it was soft at the time. Right. It was so fun. Sorry. I, yeah. the turf, the turf when we played was just 
Well, Smelly, is one of those holes you can tell me like the, the angles from the other fairway, like how, <laughs> how it works in from there? <laughs> oh, that did happen on a couple. I would say, sorry, don't be afraid, Nick, because that's a course where you can play it a fairway over, actually. Um, you know, and there's a hole 17. The ravine is just staring at you. So you block it straight right over there, and, and then you come in with a wedge to a horrible angle. Well, for us, it was a wedge. I don't know what it would be for you know, because they had us so far up, but they sent a purple double cross here and there, you know, like well, the I got the smothers every now and then. So Scotty, <laughs> anything else you want to ask Jeff about uh, his experience or. Yeah. I, I, I just on. think um, one last question, Jeff, because this year is, is a little different for you because you know, you're playing in a tour event and that's in the middle of our season. Um, you know, how much, focus are you putting on that because again i think just similar to the national club pro making the cut would just be an incredible achievement so how much focus are you putting towards that tour event this year is it you going to do anything different with your schedule or what are what are your thoughts with that uh so i've already kind of uh i haven't blocked the whole week off but i blocked quite a bit of it off um I was uh, scheduled to play in the Madden's pro but I guess that's out. So on that Monday, I'm going to go ahead and just maybe even they'll let me out Sunday. I'm going to spend Sunday and Monday out there quite a bit. Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to teach some pretty good amount just to get some um, get some lessons in. And then um, Thursday, Friday, I've got it blocked off, and I've got the weekend blocked off right now. So yeah, that's the plan. But, uh, you know, I, I, I live right here by I probably average one and a half rounds here a year. I don't really play at TPC that much because I'm – busy at Minicata and um, the, but I do have a couple of friends that are members and I'm going to try to play. I mean, I've played the pro, we have the program there every year, but a lot of times we don't play it, you know, all the way back. So I'm going to try to get a couple of rounds in with my friend, John Daniels, uh, who's a member out there, maybe two, two rounds prior to that week. Uh, and I'm going to play, go play the back tees just to get the look, you know, the feel, played a few of the back tees but i want to try to do that and then i part of the equipment stuff is i i i put in a um uh i took the i'm gonna still have it occasionally for certain events a three iron but i'm decided i've got this new uw uh, and it hits the ball really high it's kind of like a seven wood slash hybrid and uh thinking about coming into some of those long holes like par fives being able to hit it high and stop it so a little bit of thought with that with the equipment change that hey you know how many three irons am i going to be able to hit up in the air and land it on the green and stop it on the green probably not that many so i gotta think about stuff like that and yeah i just try to get my lines figured out out there and yeah i know the course pretty well besides that we've played you know quite a few of events there so so i think that'll be nice to have that comfort you know comfort and uh yeah it's just i've always you know wanted to i mean i've played two pgas and i played a corn ferry event but i've never played like an actual pga tour event like run by the pga tour you know pga championship not run by the pga tour a lot of people don't know that it's run by pga of america and having it in minnesota i mean i've, I've done a lot of money qualifiers and stuff got close a couple times but um to play a tour event in Minnesota in my backyard. It's, it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. And it'll be fun to have a lot of the, my friends and Minnesota members and, you know, clubs have been at it before out there cheering me on and stuff. So that'll be pretty special. Okay. And so my that, brother, brother on the bag. So that'd be really cool too. So you don't need me. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so, the, uh, so that's maybe your biggest week of the year. Of course, section championship table, you got a lot of them, but I want to talk about possibly the, the biggest off week or not major is the ripstick pro-am and the KWLM pro-am back to back days. Sorny, are yeah. you in for both? Oh, I'm in. I, I was pretty excited to see how you guys schedule, you know, that's great. You know, back to back, uh, you can uh, just kind of turn them into two. And one of my guys that I'm bringing has a cabin uh, near Minnewaska actually. So we're going to stay there on Sunday night and then get over to the, the Eagle Creek, which is a really fun course. I was very impressed with it last year. You know, you cut two different nines, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So well, that's gonna be thank you. And I'm glad to hear that we have a we have a meeting tonight about the KWO and Pro Am, and I think you're gonna be excited. We're gonna kick up some AM stuff. Nice. Uh, probably put a little bit more um uh, give them a little bit a chance to play for a little bit more uh dough, especially with some of the you know the way some of the things are happening. So uh you can share that with your AM members. I'll know more tonight, but Scotty, uh, anything cool happening at the Ripstick Prom that Jeff needs to know about? 
It's that, well, Minnewaski is in great shape. It's, uh, yeah, we'll have a full field. I think Casey will send out uh, invites here shortly. It's up a little bit, kind of the, as, as Jeff alluded to, now we're back to back with you. I think it'll be a good spot and schedule, kind of that old Purim uh, date. Mm-hmm. And it used to kind of, I mean, it's always been a big pro but it's sometimes got lost in the shuffle between Edinburgh, State Open, wherever it kind of fell. It was always very well attended, but now it's kind of in a, in a very good spot, I think, on the schedule. So, um, yeah, always a fun event. I think that's going to be on my five courses to play Jeff at is Minnewaska, which which I think that's one of the courses in there. So we know at least one. Fairbo, two. Eh, um, yeah, Rinsong? all the courses I've worked at. Yeah, no, I don't know. Summerby. Uh, Jeff likes Winsong and Summerby. Oh, well, then they're out. All right. All right. Real quick, you guys, we got two more topics. We got to hit them quick, and I want to get both of your thoughts. I'm going to ask this question, and we don't have a lot of time. We still haven't even brought Tone in. Poor guy's just sitting in the back, but that's all right, Tone. You take, you, you do a lot for us. So hang on there. So uh, things got interesting this week, and I want to get your both opinion on this. Um, the tour finally made a stance, I would say. I, I think a lot of it had been talk, talk, and I'm talking about the LIV, the Saudi Arabian tour, if we can call it that, just for namesake. Um, as soon as the tour, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, they have denied players the opportunity to go play. They've basically drawn the line in the sand, and I tweeted out yesterday, I go, oh, it just got real grab your popcorn because I'm interested in Scotty. I'll start with you because you mentioned it uh, to me yesterday. And I, not after reading, I agree. We're probably going to head for some lawsuits here. And I think it's going to get really interesting. Give me some just quick thoughts. And then Sorny, I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah. I think uh, all along, everybody's kind of because of the, the, the human rights and everything, everyone's kind of been like, Hey, why would you go over there other than the money and things like that? But I think what it boils down to is say Warren Buffett started a tour separate to this and there is money and there wouldn't be this, Oh, well, why are you going over there in supports of of these rights? Cause Warren Buffett, there's no background like that. And there Warren Buffett has the money as does the backing of the LIV that they can, it's, it's antitrust, it's monopoly laws. It's things like that, that the tour is going to push, until it comes to a lawsuit. They don't want to lose any of these top players. Not that it's the top top, but what's to say next year, guys that are coming out of college, LIV doesn't recruit the top five players out of college to get them to come there because it's a lot easier. They wouldn't have to go through qualifying. They could get in the events. So they're going to get, be able to generate that talent. And the tour is trying to stop that as much as they can. It's, it's going to be a lawsuit. It might be one of the most publicized lawsuits in the history of sports. I'm going to go on record in saying that because the money is there. And Greg Norman is a very uh, motivated and passionate person, and he's not going to back down from a challenge. So this is going to be, like you said, Greg, it's going to be very, very interesting. I'll pipe in here since Greg seems a little preoccupied. Well, no, we... I'm sorry. I want to hear your oh. thoughts. Go ahead. Well, I talk too much. Everybody knows it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I get where the tour is coming from and, and stuff like that. But the thing that I think, you know, and, and, you know, we're obviously on a smaller scale of this, but, you know, you're independent contractors. I know that there's some stipulations with tour membership and stuff like that, but, you know, I mean, the thing you think about golf is what I've always thought about. Like, so in the NFL, you get 60 players on a team, basically 30 teams. That's 1800 guys, right? PGA tour, you got 200 and only 156 of them in the summer can play. Right. As far as who has status, 200 guys, you know, that's one ninth, the population of, you know, the NFL rosters. Right. So there's guys out there that aren't that far off. And okay, let's say that, you know, the live, they want what 30, 40 guys in their events, right? And, you know, a mixture of 48, 48. Okay, so 48 guys, let's say they get, you know, 
20, you know, kind of upper level guys, right. To play and, you know, not, maybe not all their events, but some of their events. And then you get some, you know, kind of mid-level guys that they're bringing in too. Well, that creates more opportunities for other guys <clears throat> those weeks on the PGA tour, you know? So I'm, I'm kind of torn on the thing. I, I, I think that, um, you know, I get the PGA Tour wants to keep their best players, but on the other hand, it's like, well, you know, if you have something that's competing, right, that's got, you know, some allure financially and maybe the venues and whatnot, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like that these players should have a little more freedom to make up their own minds because in, in the end, it's, you know, the true uh, essence of a golf pro is, you know, you're not under contract, right? You're making every penny you make is, you know, merit-based, basically you know you don't just get an appearance fee or a salary right like an nfl player does so yeah i think that they i i think that a lot of a lot of uh, players will kind of look at it as a slap in the face if the pga tour is saying you're not allowed to do this it's like well okay maybe then i don't need to play on the pga tour i don't know it's these guys that have uber money from other career like a guy like sergio who's threatening to do it i mean he could just be like yeah i'm out you know so it should be interesting well, well said, you guys. I'd love to hear different opinions on this. I, I have to say, I think Phil Mickelson is being proven right, and I hated what he did. I hated how he said it. I hated how it came out um, because I love the guy, but it's kind of all come to fruition that I agree with you, Sorny. I think there has to be some, whether you agree with the Saudi Arabian ethics and morals or not, um, I think is a secondary conversation to whether they should be allowed to go play on another tour or not. And I know... You said it, you know, the PGA Tour has its membership bylaws, if you will. And I know that they got to protect their deal, but they have a good product. I don't know what they're afraid of. I, 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 you know, Scotty's heard me say this. I don't think golf needs Tiger Woods. I say it a lot because golf is in a really good place. We're lucky to have him and it's good to have him. But if he went over and played in the LIV, I don't think the tour would actually hurt. I think people still love to watch it and love to watch the history of the other golf courses. So any other final thoughts from you two on that? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is just going to be clearly this isn't just going to be a one and done year for this, the, the LIV. Too much it's money. Gonna be, yeah, it's going to be how do these events factor in for world golf rankings points? How do these events factor in for major exemptions? Because as Jeff alluded to, all of the majors, you know, the PGA Championship we own, U.S. Open, USGA, RNA, Augusta National, and the Masters. So the PGA Tour doesn't own any of the majors. So how are those exemptions going to factor in with this tour? Because clearly this tour is right there with any of the other tours, secondary tours out there. So that's what I'm most interested in is how that will shake out. Great segue into our next uh, deal. Sorny, we do some picks. And we're going to let you pick with us this week because we love when our guests win. Because uh, <laughs> I, I had a horrible showing on our Masters pick. Uh, Scotty, did any of my guys make the cut? They didn't. Should we bring in our uh, yeah? Let's bring Tony. Yeah, he, he Tony might is be always asleep. part of these. So here's how we do this, and we're gonna here's what we're gonna do today. So Sorny, we're we didn't prep you on this, so you don't have a lot of time. But we're gonna give you the first pick of the draft. We're going to each have four picks. It was three at the Masters, but I need more guys because I uh, I really screwed up the, uh, the <laughs> fact that none of my guys made the cut. It was embarrassing. And so we're going to go four guys. We're going to snake draft. So the order is going to go Sorensen, Snow, because I was brutal, Tone, and then Scotty, who won. None of us picked the winner. None of okay. us. We were, okay. we were idiots. So, Sorny, this is coming up next week, PGA Championship. We were hoping you would be there. One of us were going to pick Sorensen um, <laughs> because we base it on total money. So, again, you need the winner probably, but if you get the guy who's second, third, and fourth, you might have a chance to win. So, all right, Sorny, start us off. PGA Championship, Southern Hills, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Have you played there? Yeah, I played a TaylorMade uh, event there. and Actually, uh, that was one of the years I qualified for the, the TaylorMade uh, Pebble Beach event, and I got a huge skin on the 11th hole. So that was fun. So you're going to have more fun watching this because you kind of know the shots. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, the old days, if I, if I hadn't got in, I probably wouldn't watch a second of it, but now I'm, I'm a little more mature so I can handle it. 
All right, Sorty, who are you picking? Pick number uh, one. It seems like a course that Brooks Kepka is going to play well at, so I'm going Brooks Kepka. Oh, you gave me my guy. Okay, I hate to do it, but I like Brooks. I, I hope he does well. I picked him in, in the Masters, and he uh, – he was brutal for me. I am going to go with the hottest player on tour. The guy who says it's his favorite golf course in America, Scotty Scheffler. Wow. Nice. All right, Tone. I'll go um, with Cameron Smith. That's a high pick for that. I mean, he's, I don't want to judge, but because I missed all the cuts, but I mean, he only plays good at the master, doesn't he? Now he won the players. Well, that's true. That's just, that's a good point. And he's due here. Scotty, you get two picks, Scotty. All right. I'm well aware. Because we're snake back, we're snaking back. Well, remember at the Masters, we started over because I was feeling so confident in myself. Remember that? Yes. You're I was a feeling mistake. very confident about Scotty Scheffler. He's due for a letdown, just so no. you know. I'm writing this up. Come on, here we go. Who do you got? Uh Morikawa, Justin Colin? Thomas. Okay, if this is a keeper draft, does it matter which one? Because his second round pick, you might have to pay him less. So I'll take Morikawa first. Okay, and then Thomas. All right, Tone, coming back to you. Dustin Johnson. Sure, sure. All right, <laughs> Greg Snow's pick here. Okay, probably not Sergio Garcia. He doesn't even want to be there. Phil Mickelson. <laughs> uh, probably Phil, he's a defending champion. You know, you never know. Tiger um, Woods. Uh, I do like Tiger. Um, I do think he could play well in that event. Yeah, let's go with Tiger. I like it. <laughs> Why are you listening to me? Yeah, I like it. I, you know, I because you rip on me for always not picking or not liking him, and I, I, I yeah, I'm going with it. Okay, Sorty, you got two picks. Um, but keep, keep it on the nostalgia level here. I'm, I'm, you know, defending champ, and I want to see him come back and play. I'm going Phil. Yes. All right. So then and I snick. Yep. Uh, and the guy's got to win a major again soon. So Rory McIlroy. Yeah, I was thinking about him. Okay. Um, I'm really hesitant to do this because he really hurt me in the last in the Masters, and I'm he didn't make one birdie. Yeah, you're gonna Not do it one again. birdie in the Masters, <laughs> and I, I just. I'm you are so camping. predictable. You knew I was going to pick this guy? Yes. But he's you can't remember birdies. half the names. He's got to make more than zero birdies. <laughs> and it's Xander. So I got Scheffler and Shoffley. See, that'll make it easy for me to remember which one I got. All right, Tone. I'll go with uh, Louis Oosthuizen. Is he still hurt? I don't. Is he? I have no idea. I'm Killed me in one of my. I'm in these masters pools, and I had him in there, and then he, when he withdraws, it just. I don't forgive people for that stuff. Scotty, two we'll picks. Two picks. John Rahm, Victor Hovland. Wow, nice. Yeah, yeah, a lot of deep field, a lot of good players here. No, yeah. All right, uh, Tone, it's back to you, but slow down because I got to get a list here. I got running out of players that I. I'll uh, go with um, a player who is, if he wins this, I think he would win the Grand Slam for golf, Jordan Spieth. Okay. Spieth. All right, I want to pull somebody out of left field here. Some, uh, I mean, not that Tiger Woods wasn't, but I don't want any. Uh, no, I can't pick Hoagie, can I? That doesn't make sense. He's he's not there. Max Homa. No, I I don't. I mean, he's he. You know, remember when Sony talked about some people are just happy to be there? I I think he's one of those guys. I I don't. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, it's a little weird one, but I'm gonna go with Tony Finau. Okay. All right, Sony. Last pick of the draft, Mister Irrelevant. Who do you got? <laughs> I kind of need some ideas here. I'm I'm, I'm grinding on what I'm thinking about here. So Matt, so just if you guys do you guys remember the top five in the Masters? So you had uh, what was it? You had uh, Cameron Schechter, Smith, uh, Rory, Colin. Um, was you know. Zalatoris up there? 
Uh, he yeah. fell off a little bit. No. Yeah, he can't. He's not a very good putter. I think you got to, I, I play there and you got to be a really good putter out there. So, Sorry. how about Jesse Mueller? <laughs> yeah, you know, I was actually kind of thinking maybe it'd be funny or not funny, but you know, just to throw a club pro in there because we had a couple uh -huh. make the, we had a couple club pros make the cut last year. That's right at uh, Kiowa. So you know, that's that's uh, how about Sam Burns? Okay, I do like him. I don't know why he faltered. So I had him in one of my pools for the Masters draft. I I like that guy. Okay, all right. Everybody need to be refreshed on their picks so they know who to cheer for. Again, we know you do. I know. Well, I do. Yeah, what's the stakes here? Are we betting like Diet Mountain Dews or what's on here? Oh, I, I would like to throw something on this. How about a, a drink at, let's see, what's the next event where we're all four going to be together? The Luther at White Bear? Are you guys well, in? How about, uh, how about the Craigans Pro Am? Oh, no, Tom won't be there. Right. I think the White Bear. Okay. Right? Yeah, let's, sure. let's, the, the Luther, or the winner. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? The winner have to buy? No. The lo all three losers have to buy the winner? Scotty, what do you want to do? Um, yeah, we can do some sort of a drink, a beverage uh, of sorts, a coffee, a, a soda, or a sarsaparilla. <laughs> <laughs> so the winner, I think the winner gets a drink from each, each loser? I like that. Winner, yes. and it could be a Pepsi. It could be anything. So now let's um yeah let's just do that. I like that idea. We'll, we'll we'll go with that. All right, guys, nailed it. That's our show for today. We're kind of the overtime tone. We missed you. Anything to add? No, I think this is a great conversation, Jeff. Thanks for jumping on and um, yeah. looking forward to uh, all the events coming up now. TCO next week and just keep rolling. All right, I want to tease something here, and now we got to follow through, Scotty Sorny. You might need this, all right? So I need you to pay attention here. Tone and Kaylee and I were chatting, and we got to find a time for Club Pro Chatter for you and I, Scotty, to go to the wilderness, and we're going to tape ourselves playing 18 holes, and we're going to help people play that golf course. Because, you know, I've got some experience in some of the angles. You know, I shot 90-something, remember? And so I can help people, like, if they're in the woods over here, where they got to go, and you can help people like on their good shots. I think we'll have some fun with it. Doesn't that are sound you, like a blast, Sorny? That's good. I just the question is: Are you going to rehash the phone call on your on your drive home after? <laughs> Changed my life. I think I've made it many times. Greg yeah, Snow would not be uh, in Olivia if it wasn't for that debacle. Did I call you too? No, no, I'm just you know. Uh, I might have. We, we talked about it, and it was, it was, yeah, it was a big deal in the end. Woo. Anyways, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and that was mysterious. <laughs> and I will, I, when I'm sitting in that clubhouse, I'm going to remember, oh, I remember sitting here going, what are you doing? What, why are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> All right, any final thoughts, you guys? No, Jeff, thanks for uh, hopping on. I'll get you. We've got three of the courses down. We'll get you two more. <laughs> if we get done early enough with the Pro-Am, maybe you guys could just flip over at Eagle Creek and play play another 18. There we yeah, go. Well, thanks for having me, guys. It was fun to be on a, on a whole one. I, I did get a little quick one at the, uh, the Snowball. I was on there for about five minutes at the Snowball Pro-Am that one year, but uh, it was cool to do a whole episode, so I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff, and thanks for what you do for our section. Uh, you represent us well. You're a great player, and it's fun to fun to have these. And that's why why we really wanted to do this podcast. We love tournament golf, and we want to talk about it. And you're right up there with the Don Berries and the Brent Snyders, and I would say the Scotty McDonalds, but he just had a bad year. So hopefully <laughs> it'll come up uh, down the road that he can be part of that conversation as well. So for Tone, for Scotty, I'm Greg Snow. Jeff, thanks a lot. We'll see you all next time. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.